In this video, I'll be working through the maths question you see on the screen here from the 2024 Cambridge A-Level Mechanics paper. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, or a different paper entirely, check out the description below for a link to playlists. And if you find this video or any of my videos useful and would like to help the channel out, if you are in a class group with other people sitting the exam, a share in that group would really help out. Failing that, a like, subscribe, or even a super thanks. In question one, we're told about a cyclist uh, cycling along a road with a with a mass. The cyclist and the bike has a mass of uh, let's put it here, seventy two kilograms. And uh, let's see, there's a resistive force stopping them. So that's friction or uh, wind resistance. And they want us to work out the work done by this cyclist. They tell us more information like. Uh, the cyclist is going at uh, 8 meters per second at the start and after a 100 meters, is it? After 100 meters, he's going at 16 uh, meters per second. So, so he accelerates, he sp speeds up. So like I said, they want us to work out the work done by uh, the cyclist. Now there's two ways to do this question. There's, there's very often two ways. Uh, there's... Uh, equating the energy and there's working out the forces. Last time I did a question like this, I promised next time I would use the force method. But because this is a question one, I think I have time to do both ways. So first of all, I'm gonna solve this question just looking at the forces. Uh, if you don't like that, don't worry, skip ahead and I'll do the question all over again using the energy method. Okay, so what forces are acting on this cyclist? Uh, gravity's pushing him down, but I don't care because he's not moving in um, in that plane. And I don't care about the friction caused by the reaction to gravity because they've already told us um, a lot about the, the resistive force. The force is 28 newtons. The only other force is uh, the force imparted by the work he's doing. So he's pushing himself for, forward with some sort of uh, driving force. We'll call it a D for now. Um, so let's find out how much that force is. Because they ask for work done, but we can find work by this force times the total distance. So um, let's just work out the force and the work should uh, sort itself out. Um, how do we do that? Uh, these two forces will cancel a bit and we will be left over with uh, just one force, one F pushing this cyclist forward. This, that's D minus uh, 28 will be this driving force forward. Um, we know a lot about force. We know force is equal to MA. We know M. If only we knew A, we could find this force. And that's where it helps to remember, we know what he starts, the starting speed, we know the final speed, we even know the distance that uh, this cyclist travels is 100 meters. So we can find out the acceleration. Um, we can just use our equations of motion. The beginning speed is eight, the final speed is 60, and uh, the distance is 100. We don't know time, and we don't know A. A is what we're looking for. So. Uh, which equation will work? Ah, here's, here it is. Uh, phi squared equals u squared plus 2as. So this is everything we know. It has We know u, we know v, we know s, and we're looking for a. So let's uh, just go ahead and rearrange this. We would get a is equal to v squared minus u squared, and we'd have to divide by 2s. Divide by 2s. We can just fill all these numbers in. A is equal to, let's see, 16 squared minus 8 squared over uh, 2 times 100, over 200. Put all that into a calculator and, oh, we get a nice neat number. We get uh, 0 0.896. That's uh, exactly, we get this. It's not rounded off. And now that we know A, like I said, we should find the overall force. The overall force is equal to 72 kilograms, that's the total mass, times 0 0.96. Uh, we multiply them in, we will get the total force in this system is 69.12 uh, newtons. So to say that again, this and this combines together to get this total force. 
So that means uh, 69.12 sorry, one two must equal D minus 28. These forces combined must equal that. Uh, just add 28 to both sides, we get D is equal to, um, had to do a quick edit there, I have the wrong number down here. Uh, I had D is equal to 77, but that, that couldn't work out. So it's 97.12 uh, uh, Newtons. That's the driving force. A lot of students will leave that as their final answer. You will lose a mark. Uh, they didn't ask for the force uh, driving the cyclist forward. They asked for the total work done. And uh, work, work is equal to force times uh, over distance, um, times distance. Um, so this force multiplied by 100. So the total work done is equal uh, 9,712 joules. And that's a, that's the final answer for part for question one. I'm gonna clean all this off and do it again. The the energy method I think is better. I, it's shorter most of the time. It depends on how the question's set up. Uh, in this question, I think it works out a little shorter. Um, other times, the force method will be better. So you have to decide which to use yourself. Okay, do the question all over again. Um, they tell us the speed at the start and the speed at the end. That's a clue that they probably wanted us to use the energy method. Uh, conservation of energy. The energy at the start will equal the energy at the end, plus or minus any work changed in. Um, or to say that kinetic energy will equal the kinetic energy at the end, plus or minus uh, any work done in. So we have a kinetic energy, K at the, the start, I'll put an S in here. That will equal to a half times m, that's 72, times the speed. I've rubbed out the speed, but it was eight. Eight squared. That's the kinetic energy at the start of this system. Uh, the kinetic energy at the end of this system, uh, we'll put E, is a half 72 times 16 squared. You can put that in a calculator if you want, but uh, I'll, I'll do that later. Um, then what happens to this system? Something takes uh, does work against the system. That's the resistance. Remember where work is equal. Work is equal force uh, times um, a distance or a, uh, over, over a certain distance. Uh, in this case, the work done by the resistance, the resistive force is 28, 28 times 100. So just put it in as 2800. And the only other bit of work is the work done by the cyclist. I, Again, we don't need the work I was forced this time. They want the answer, they want this W at the end. Put all that in one line. I would get the starting energy, and uh, we're nearly finished already. The starting energy um, is, uh, well, sorry, starting energy, take away the f uh, work by the, by the resistance, minus 2,800, plus the work done by our cyclist, plus W, must equal the kinetic energy at the end, a half 70, let's put in some brackets here, a half 72 times 16 squared. Um, rearrange that, we get W is equal, uh, let's let's put in some actual numbers here, a W, what's this, the 16 squared part, that'll equal 9,216, that's from here, minus this guy is uh, 2,304, these are all joules, and then this will turn into a plus, plus 2,800 joules. Put all that together, the cyclist must have produced a work of 9,712 joules. And that's, a, that's the same answer we got the other part, I think. I've rubbed it out now. Okay, that's it for question one. If you have any questions about either way I did that, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.